and Jay Capital, aka new to the beard game. Don't know how I feel about it. Might be out of here soon. Today's video will be about earnings and what you need to know. We're gonna go to my computer. This is a picture I took. This is Niagara Falls, Canada side. I thought the shot was crazy, so I took it. Bring it back PowerPoint because I haven't used it since high school, but she's coming back. I know it. What you need to know about earnings? ENJ Capital, like and subscribe. Every few months, companies report earnings, and these are financials of what they did in the past quarter. You know, profit, sales, loss, revenue. They're important for everybody. They're important for long-term investors. You may want to buy. You know, you want to know exactly what's inside the company, up to date up-to-date financials if you're more into long term that's what you care about your financial health of the the company these dates are known ahead of time it's not like somebody's getting bought out where it just happens comes by surprise earnings announcements are known ahead of time you could easily find them and you know earnings if you want to value a company and you want to see how it compares to its peers you need earnings you need to know the financials you need to know what's going on inside there's a few different kinds there's 10 k's that's annual once a year, 10Ks, those are the big ones, more detailed. My advice to you, anybody who's serious about the market, about fundamental analysis, read one of those. It's not fun. They're long, they're draining, they're, you're not going to be excited to read them. Read one a year. If you're starting out, just read one a year. From top to bottom, you know, you, you can't be lazy. Come on, stop it. 10Qs, you know, quarterly, more up to date. You know, you don't want to just wait for an annual report because that only comes out end of the year you got the AKs which are unscheduled reports right here you can put your ticker symbol good old Apple we love Apple go to the first one you look for uh, 10k it's the most recent one Apple's coming out with earnings soon so this will be up to date the 28th I think I was click document all this junk I know it's long Look at it. We'll, we'll go over a video of how to what, what to look for on this. Get familiar with them. Or you can just go to the company website. Apple.com. Go down to the bottom, Investors. SEC Filings. Do, uh, let's do Quarterly Filings. I right, say 10Q, July 30. That's a while ago. It's annual report. Dang. Anywho, three main things in earnings. Earnings per share, revenue, and guidance. Earnings per share is net income minus preferred dividends divided by end of period common shares outstanding. So net income, how much they get to keep after all the expenses, after they pay everybody off, how much the company actually gets to keep. Preferred dividends from preferred stock, they get paid first. Preferred, it's like out of you and your brother, your mom prefers your brother over you. How it goes. Common shares outstanding is all the shares that is owned by, you know, shareholders, the company itself. So EPS shows how much money a company makes for each share of its stock. And the EPS is also used in the PE ratio. So now we have analyst estimates from banks or, you know, investment firms or wherever. They tell the world what they think this company will do this quarter, next year, whatever. Say, okay, I've done my research. I've looked up their sales and their, well, their product probably doing projected sales and revenue. They make an estimate. They'll put a number out there of what they think the company will do. When the company reports its earnings, and they, they show what they actually did, they they could either be higher than that number or lower than that number. So here, oh, Apple beat estimates by 20% or whatever like that. If they go below it, they missed. I don't really use Yahoo Finance, but good old Apple. Earnings per share, 11.89. The higher the earnings per share, that means the more profit they made. EPS, TTM, TTM is trailing 12 months. Earnings date, January 28th. So the one-year target estimate was 276. They're already beyond that. Does it mean it's overvalued? No. So you see how it says beat, 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 beat. Quarter three, 2019. Analyst expectations was 2.84. That was the estimate. And they beat by 19 cents. But look at this one. They're expecting a lot compared to the other quarters. Keep an eye out on Apple. Maybe they just under underestimated Apple, these, these few ones. A lot of times companies might do that. They'll... In advance, say like, oh, we don't expect to beat. It may have a little downward trickle to the uh, the stock at the time, but you know they're kind of like sandbagging, you know. And you're really like a black belt, but you hang around white belts all the day. They know they killed it, telling people they didn't kill it. And then let's go to trading view real quick. Good old Apple. The E E is for earnings, D is for dividends. You see how earnings brings volatility. 
It's just chilling, chilling, going up, going up, having a good day. Boom, earnings come, boom, drops. Chilling, chilling, having a good day. Not much real fluctuation. Earnings drops and then pops. Earnings. Chilling, going up, having a good shoot in the breeze. Shoots up. Back to the, the slides. Revenue is total income earned by a company for selling its goods and services. Top line, aka top line because it's in the top line, the income statement. Gross sales before everything gets taken out. Revenue is income generated before expenses are deducted. This may be the most important one if you're trading it. Guidance is what the management, the inside of the company, believes the company will do in the future. Or look in statements, they share how they think their sales profit will be like in the next quarter in future. When they factor in how the market, Federal Reserve, economics, economy, trade tensions, that was a big one. Tim Cook was talking about trade tensions with U.S. and China and how that may affect sales. People are aware of that. Guidance at times is most important out of three because hearing what the inside of the company feels about the future can change some potential investors' focus on the company. If you're looking into buying the stock and then you hear the people from the inside who know best about the company saying, oh, we, we think it's going to be a little shaky for the next few months, you're going to buy in now or you're going to buy in after the shakiness goes away? There's a conference call after earnings. Start off as the host, investor relations, says who's on the call, you know, CEO, CFO, upper management. Talk about the quarter. At the end, there's a question and answers from... You know, you're not going to be able to just call in and be like, how is the stock going to be in the next two months? The questions are asked by like financial guys I'm like Merrill Lynch, Goldman Sachs. A lot of times you'll get a link from uh, your brokerage or you could just look it up on the company website. You know, conference call, it will show up. Some of them are quick. I've listened to one Tesla where it was like an hour long. You hear from, you know, Elon Musk and whatnot. The rise in volatility as it approaches earnings because higher volatility means that the market is expecting this stock to move, either up or down. Market is pricing in this move. So the option contracts, calls and puts tend to be more expensive. The move could be estimated ahead of time. Watch our video. How to find the expected move of the stock. We talked about that before. Well, IV tends to rise as earnings comes, not just earnings, but other binary events. If this company reports earnings at 4 p.m., you're gonna see that bad boy shake up and down. You're gonna see it drop quick. You're gonna see it go up quick. You know, don't take that too serious until after officially released because that's just a lot of people not knowing what to do really if you're not prepared to trade with that much volatility don't try they'll wipe you out quick volatility crush you come to me you're like uncle evan I bought calls the stock shot to the moon but i'm still down what's the deal volatility crush the market was pricing in that move when they price it in the options get more expensive those options have all that filler of volatility already priced in so when you take that volatility out after the earnings and you take that out and you say, okay, this is the move, the volatility is out there. Implied volatility is before the move, what you expect the stock to go up or down. After that move happens and you already know, there's not much volatility. There's not much guessing. Sometimes it's better just to sell options. I'm not going to get into that. I don't want to get, get you wiped out if the stock moves beyond its expected move. Aftermath is all these upgrades and downgrades from these analysts, the PT, future P, price targets. What they do, you know, if the earnings are good, you're going to have these same guys from these banks say, oh, I think Apple is going to be a buy. Price target will be $400 within the next year. Do they know? No. Do they all kind of just, you know, jump the bandwagon, you know, earnings are good, so just throw a new number on there. Who cares? Just raise the number, whatever. Anywho, don't take these numbers too, too serious. If they're bad, they lower price target, and it'll have a negative effect on that stock for a little bit. You have underperform. They believe the stock won't do well in the near future. You have outperform, expect the stock to do better than expected, or better than, better than the market performance. And market perform is like neutral. These, these upgrades add fuel to the fire. You know, if, if a stock kills it on earnings, beat estimate, great revenue, a positive looking guidance, start seeing like, oh, Citigroup raises price target to outperform. That's gonna bump up, you know, a little bit of the trading session. Everybody's buying because the earnings are good. And then you hear second advice from professionals saying, oh, yeah, the stock is good. You're going to get some more buyers into that. I guess that's it. Like and subscribe, BNJ Capital. Plan earnings. Be careful. You know, if you have positions on, if you have like 200 shares of Apple, you no know, earnings are coming up, but you're a little nervous because you don't want to like lose all these gains that Apple has been giving you. You hedge. What worked with me when I had... 200 shares of Apple. I wish I still had them. I can't predict the future. At the time, I thought it was right to sell them. Still got a profit. I would buy puts on triple Qs. It's an ETF and it tracks the NASDAQ. You just buy puts on Apple 
and Apple goes goes up, there's no chance those puts are gonna be in the money anytime soon. And you factor in implied volatility, being pumped into that option contract makes it more expensive. You're gonna have to fight against Apple going up and fight against volatility crush. So it's best, that's not the way to do it. Apple so heavy in the NASDAQ, Apple earnings were bad, then the Qs would drop. They don't have as much like implied volatility into the triple Qs. There are the strategies, like I know uh, Tasty Trade, Tasty Trade's a website or TV show that they talk about options in every day. It's a good show, go check it out. What they do is they sell volatility. It means they, they sell option contracts. They don't try to pick a direction, they just sell option contracts. They wanna make money as the volatility decreases. We'll get into strategies, earnings strategies in the future. ENJ Capital, what you need to know about earnings.